Hello and welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us. I see folks are coming into the call. We will get started in just a moment. As folks are coming in, I just want to say hello. Thank you for joining us. We know you have a lot on your plate and yet you're here with us. So we want to make this time valuable and meaningful for you. Thank you for joining us. The doors have been let open, and so we're going to take just a minute to let people come in. Usually we get started about one minute after the top of the hour, so thank you for joining us. All right, welcome everyone. We're so excited to have you here. Um, I know that uh, life is difficult right now and um, that uh, I feel honored having you join us today. Um, our topic today uh, is Leading Remote Workers, Lockdown's Impact on Effective Management. So I do know that this is a very timely topic and hello Mary, how are you today? Hi Anissa, so good to talk to you. Like, hello, everybody. <laughs> hello, everyone. Um, I'm going to introduce Mary in just a moment. Um, initially, I want to say thank you to our sponsors, because without our sponsors, none of this would be possible right now. Um, the Whitmarsh Consulting Group is a group of distinctively um, specialized and skilled individuals um, who specialize in human resources, information technology consulting, and multi-channel marketing strategy. So do reach out to David and his team if uh, you uh, are in the market for some uh, multi-channel marketing. So I also wanna say thank you to our sponsor, Insperity, HR that makes a difference. When I reached out to Insperity to ask them to sponsor this event uh, and the entire summit, I said, what would you be willing to give away for free to our listeners, to our participants, keeping in mind that our clients, our peers, our leads are in the HR space um, and our business professionals. And what they came up with, um, I feel like it was pretty special. This is an offer for a free HR financial analysis report and debrief. This is an HR budget analysis, a confidential report, and a one-on-one -on -one debrief. And I said, well, wow, you know, is that some kind of automated process? And they said, no, this will take us anywhere between three and, you know, 10 hours, depending on the data and the client. And I said, well, wait a second, are you offering this to everyone? Or is this like a, a gift for, to one? And they said, no, everyone. So um, I also said to them, but what if they're not a good fit for you guys as a client? And they said, that's not the point. We're here to give back. This entire summit is yeah. free because we want to do something besides wallow in my misery and my you know, fear right now. <laughs> so we put together the entire summit and Insperity um, was gracious enough to, to offer this to anyone that feels like it would be beneficial to them. Um, next, I want to say thank you guys for joining us. This is the Leading in a Crisis Actionable Business and HR strategies for navigating crisis and change. We have over 40 speakers that have signed up to share their knowledge um, with you freely. Uh, when I first reached out, um, I just reached out to Mary and a few other friends and I said, what can we do? Are you in? Let's, let's throw a party, so to speak, a learning, a leading in a crisis party, so to speak. Um, and Mary, you, you never hesitated. You're like, let's do this. I got yes. to make it happen. And, uh, and now we actually have more speakers than we actually know what to do with. We are going to be doing this every Wednesday and every Thursday throughout April. And if you can't make something live, don't hesitate to, to log back in because you can make the replay. My name is Anissa Avon, and I'm the CEO of Turnkey Coaching and Development Solutions, founded Turnkey in 2004 with the mission of bringing um, affordable, measurable learning and development solutions um, in a scalable way while simultaneously finding ways to partner with experts like Mary. That was my mission. Um, and I believe that this leading in a crisis is actually a part of that. So I want to introduce you to Mary. Mary is an organizational development expert. Um, she is a best-selling author. Um, she has asked, she's a 
frequent speaker on topics such as increasing your personal effectiveness, discovering your purpose. She has a 25 year career, both in financial services and the energy industries prior to being a consultant. And she has been a consultant, an executive coach, and a master trainer specializing in team building and transition planning and change management for about 13 years now. So Mary, thank you so much for joining us, for leading this conversation. Well, thank you for having me. I'm so excited about getting started here and welcome everyone to our uh, webinar. This is a very um, unprecedented time as you all are well aware. And I'm so glad that Anissa and our sponsors gave us an opportunity to really focus on some of the things that I'm sure most of you are thinking about and are concerned about. And therefore, we thought this might be a topic that would be very helpful to you. Um, so we, we wanna spend our time uh, really thinking about uh, ways that we can stay focused on the right things uh, during this unprecedented time. And what I hope to do over the next um, few minutes that we have together is to provide you with some tips on virtual communication and team management, as well as give you some ideas on facilitating virtual meetings. So how many of you uh, already know that a manager um, managing a virtual team can be quite different than having a co-located team? That's a really good question. Um, if you guys would just tell us a little bit about that, you know, what's different about it in your chat box, that would be very helpful. I know um, for me, Mary, while we're waiting for a few folks to, to share with us, um, for me, I've been managing a virtual team um, since the inception of, of my business, so 22 mm -hmm. years now. And right. the technology has come a long way since then. And I have developed a lot of strategies that so so distractions, y'all see my cat in the background. This is what all <laughs> of us are dealing with at home working from home, cats, dogs, babies, don't even mention teenagers. That's right. That's exactly right. And, and you're, you're so right. It's changed so much. Uh, working virtually is something I do all the time. And so it feels normal to me. But I know that there may be many people on this um, particular webinar that are listening in where this may either either be your first time managing a virtual team, or even if you have managed virtual teams in the past, this may feel unusual because the, the circumstances are unusual. Yeah. Uh, but for those that, that this is uh, a first time, there's a lot of things that can happen that we want to be able to help you with. And for those of you where you, you're a second hand at this, maybe you've got team members who they've not had to work from home before. Uh, they may be virtual, but they may have been virtual in an office. And now all of a sudden they're working from home with their kids and their cat. And that's just completely different. And so we want to make sure that we uh, acknowledge the fact that, that, it, that it gets complicated. Um, having a home office, uh, a, a non-existent co home office, and now having to work from home can be very challenging for people, whether it's having the right bandwidth or having a printer when they you know, normally would be in their offices and have printers. All those kinds of things can um, cause this to be a, a bit of a challenge. So we wanna talk about that. Any, any uh, comments that have come in from chat? You bet. So um, thank you, Jessa. She writes, um, seems to be more difficult connecting with my team uh, and uh, has made me adjust to how I interact with them. My style is definitely more hands on and in the field with my team, but I can't now. Right. Well, Jessa, thank you for your comment. Uh, I think a lot of times we, we notice that um, in, in, in other circumstances, we could kind of take an out of sight, out of mind attitude, but I really want to challenge us to think about having a virtual mindset. And that's different than having maybe the mindset that we had um, before. So that's, that's what we're going to do. And let's just jump right in there. Is there anything else um, that came on chat? Yeah, I, we, we can come back to it in a little bit. I, I'm, okay. I'm ready to hear what you have to share with us about being effective managers of remote teams. Super. Well, we want to clearly stay focused on the right things. Um, you know, what, what happens when someone is distracted or disoriented or, or simply are quiet during your regular conference calls? Um, you know, you probably have a way of dealing with that. And you may even make some assumptions about what's really going on out there. But here's a time where you really got to be able to read your audience. In this case, your audience is your virtual team. So I want to encourage you uh, not to assume 
that people are you know, just not interested, a lot of people are, are frankly distracted by all that's going on. And so they may not be as um, engaged as they would in the past, or they may be more engaged, but on things that are really of concern to them. Um, focusing on the right things means focusing on our ability to communicate well virtually and on collaborating with our teams well. It also means looking at what are our priorities and our goals now. Because again, this isn't just about leading in a virtual environment, it's leading in a virtual environment when we're in the middle of a bit of a, a crisis and in many cases, just unprecedented times. Yeah. And so our, our goals and our priorities obviously have, have shifted a bit. And we wanna be able to identify what some of the potential issues could be. And of course, provide uh, uh, the appropriate support. So all of those are those extra considerations that we wanna take um, stock of in this time, in this virtual community that we've found ourselves in. Um, Anissa, what, do you, what have you got there? I, I, I saw you nodding and I thought maybe you wanted to jump in. Yeah, so um, being able to read your audience is, is something that requires um, some heightened listening skills. Mm -hmm. and it requires um, some face time. If, if a person is not used to picking up on cues, you know, as a coach, we're trained to listen to the <sighs> moments to listen to the, mm, mm, you know, the little subtle things that you can hear on a telephone that tell you when a person is not buying in to what you're saying or isn't fully present when they say, um, hang on, I'm, I'm sorry, what did you say? You know that they're playing, you know, their little Xbox while they're on virtual. So there has to be the uh, a heightened sense. Mm -hmm. And that's part of reading the audience for sure. Absolutely, and, and that's one of the reasons why in, in pulling this webinar together, we really wanted to think about what are some ways in which we can communicate even better during this time. And there are three areas that I really want to focus on that put us into more of that virtual mindset that Anissa is talking about when she says, you know, being more attuned in terms of your listening. Um, the three things that I really want to focus on is building relationships during this time, empowering and clarifying your goals and priorities. Now, obviously, there's a lot more that we could talk about here, but we, we don't have a, a whole day to do this session. So I wanted to hit the high points that I think are going to be important to you. So let's Let's just take a moment to review what does it mean to build relationships in a virtual environment. So first thing, team building becomes even more important. Now for some of you, you may already be very well acquainted with your teams and so this may seem easy to you. For others, maybe you have a new team or maybe you just added a few new members, but the team is trying to readapt to something that's unusual for them because as I mentioned, even if you've been a virtual team in the past, because you're faced with unprecedented times, you have to really focus on uh, how are you building up your team and how are you uh, making sure that they're engaging with each other. And that's where this whole business of learning to read the mood of the team comes in. And, and really what it means is that there has to be a certain level of intentionality about this that maybe you didn't even think about in the past, being very intentional to the relationships, being very intentional about listening. So for example, under normal circumstances, you might be able to just run down the hall and talk to somebody that's you know, part of your team. Or under normal circumstances, maybe you, know, you have a uh, once a month meeting with your team for team, um, you know, team building or just to catch up. But in a virtual setting, and especially if it's an, a virtual setting that's unusual for your team, you have to be really intentional about making those connection points happen. In other words, whether it's giving yourself a little a reminder on your phone that says, make sure you kind of reach out to the team individually and keeping in touch and saying, how you doing? Everything okay out there? Anything you need from me? Uh, something like that. Or, I have one client who said, normally I have a once a month meeting, but I've decided because of the unprecedented times we're in, I'm going to meet with my team once a week. I'll see if that's too frequent. And if that's too frequent, I can always you know, change that. But for the immediate future, I think I need to be talking to them at least weekly so we are all staying in contact with each other. I thought, great idea, because that's exactly right. Being flexible enough to know that maybe your ordinary isn't going to work right now and you need to do something extraordinary. Wouldn't you agree, Anissa? I would agree completely. You know, yeah. when you are talking about the team building between manager and employee, um, it reminds me of something that 
even when we're not in times of crisis, the research shows that having one-on-ones with your, your every direct report weekly, not mm-hmm. monthly, not once a quarter, even, even your folks that are doing great, everyone needs that connection. If you're looking to retain your high performers, you meet with them, even if it's 10 or 15 right. minutes. I find that in a virtual environment, this is probably even more essential. We're not talking about a big 30 minute, we got to meet for 30 minutes. We're talking a one-on-one where you're asking your employee, how are you doing? What's working for you? What's not working for you? What can I do to help? Right. And that is part of that building relationships you're talking about. That's right. And it, it really does build trust because your, your employees know that you care about them. You don't just care about the work or you don't just, just care about your own problems, but you care about them. And so you're building trust in a way that is very important in this time. And you're also providing the support the way they may need it. So building relationships is really important during the time of uh, working virtually. The second point I want to make sure that we are aware of is is empowering our people. And I know that a lot of times leaders will struggle with not feeling in control. Um, Oftentimes they feel like they need to uh, have everything come through them. But I've really learned that a command and control management style doesn't work in normal times. And it certainly can be um, prohibitive in a time where you need everybody focused and in. And a lot of times when we go into that command and control environment, we really shut down the creativity of our team. Sorry, Mary. Can you see this? This is my cat wanting out. She knocked <laughs> it on the door. So these are the kind of distractions that our people are experiencing on a regular basis. Forgive me as I let the Go door- right ahead. <laughs> go take care of the cat. But for the rest of you uh, who may be dealing with, you know, cats, dogs, children, uh, we want to make sure that we really think about uh, making sure that our, our team feels empowered. They're not feeling powerless. And we don't make assumptions that we're all on the same page. So we make sure that we're patient with what could be distracting them, uh, what they might be assuming about this time. What does this mean? Because believe me, there's a lot of what does this mean for me that's going on out there? And we have to be, as leaders, conscious of that. So it's real important that you communicate your expectations during this time and make sure that your team members all understand what is the expectations. Some people are, are, are still trying to deal with the fact that it's not business as, as usual, and they may be focused on things that are not as important as are some new things. And we'll talk about that in a minute, but you're communicating your expectations is important. And then finally, rotating tasks that promote collaboration and leadership. Um, And what do I mean by that? Um, There are things that maybe you'd normally do yourself, like maybe you chair all of the team meetings uh, in the past, but this might be a great opportunity to rotate that to other team members and say, hey, I'm going to, you know, give the responsibility of of chairing the meeting to each of you, you know, on a weekly basis so that they're a part of, you know, figuring out what the agenda should be or identifying what the objectives should be and getting it ready and, 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 um, and going, at, you know, making sure the right people are there. That is the type of task that you can share that makes everybody feel a part of the team and virtually can create some team building as well as they kind of collect information from others who will be a part of any meetings that they might be uh, sharing. So empower them to do those things that you know will be helpful not only to the team, but help them to grow as individuals as well. So empowerment is good. So let's talk about the other thing that we want to make sure that we stay focused on, and that is clarifying our goals and priorities. Um, You know, I've got a lot of clients that are in the energy business and in the energy business right now, not only they're dealing with the the virus and all of that, that brings about, but they are also dealing with um, the fact that the price of oil has gone down, which dramatically has impacted what they are projects they're going to be participating in and and what they need to be focused on. So during unprecedented times, goals shift. And so therefore, your team is going to need to know if that project that they were so excited about and was working on, have been working on, is on hold. Um, They need to know that, you know, this uh, analysis that was so critical yesterday is not not that critical or even more critical. So you've got to be very intentional about focusing on what are the goals now, what are the priorities now, 
and communicating that to your team so that they realize that that thing that was so important in January is now not that important anymore. And there's something else that has taken precedence and shifting their energy to that. That's important. Simultaneously, fostering a healthy work environment. So everybody's in their houses now, right? And what does a healthy work environment look like? Well, it can certainly look like asking for feedback. You know, how are they doing? How are they feeling about this? Uh, what do they think you should be focused on if, if maybe you've missed something? Because again, as the leader, you don't have to have all the answers. Your team is perfectly capable of providing insight on some things that you would want to consider that would impact the entire team. So making sure that you're asking for feedback from them on an ongoing basis, um, ensuring that your messaging is clear. Uh, as you're giving them shifts in priorities and goals, thinking about, okay, am I, am I clear? Um, are they, do they understand what we're, what we're really focused on? And then following up on goal achievement, um, making sure that things are moving along at whatever pace you've set or whatever pace is reasonable for this time. And then most importantly, acknowledging good work. You know, people are out there uh, and they're working hard uh, and they want to be able to contribute. And, and I would appeal to their better nature, which is what everybody's pretty much operating off of right now anyway. They want to value add. So our ability to acknowledge that they're doing a good job or that they're, they're working hard or that you appreciate the fact that this is a difficult time or a stressful time, but they're still getting things in, that can be very, very helpful in creating the kind of work environment that you want. But I would also say and encourage you to, again, have some grace and some patience. Um, don't assume that you, just because you can't reach somebody right away, that they're goofing off. It may be that their kids are at home and they have to take a little bit more frequent breaks, but it doesn't mean that they're not equally as committed. Uh, maybe they're involved in virtual learning with their children. And I know that's freaking a lot of my clients out who are having to you know, relearn you know, third grade math. So, <laughs> so think about the fact that we should all give each other the grace to say, you know, they have good intentions. They're trying to figure this out too and juggle a lot of things. And, uh, and we want to acknowledge that. Wouldn't you agree, Anissa? I, I do. And I want to ask a little bit of a question about that. Um, I think that it's essential, especially right now when emotions are raw and mm -hmm. there's so much anxiety and there's so much of the unknown and in instability and chaos. Um, and yet businesses still have performance expectations. Um, so how might a manager um, focus on what really matters, making sure their employees feel listened to, heard, taken care of, um, uh, given some grace and some flexibility, but still hold their employees to some kind of performance expectations? Yeah, that's a great question. And that, that's really where expectations come in and being clear about that. Um, it, and when we talk about giving grace, it doesn't mean that you are going to tolerate, you know, just no performance or low performance. But what you may want to be flexible on is, is how that's done or maybe even timelines that might not be so critical. Um, in other words, there may be some timelines where you just you've got to hit it at this time and, and on this date. But there may be others where you can be very flexible with your, your teammates and saying, okay, we've got to get this done. Let's talk about you know, how do we get it done, but more importantly, when can we make sure that we get it done? And you really agree on and then expect that that will happen and hold people accountable for that. And so I think that's the most important thing is that holding your team accountable is critical, but how you do that you may want to flex a bit in terms of timing and, um, and what is ne needed. And especially when your team is struggling, let's say, for example, if they're struggling to get something in because they don't have the technology in place right now. I hear you know, how people talk all the time about things are shutting down because there's so many people online and it's really, really difficult. So recognizing that and making sure you're raising those issues up above you as well can oftentimes mean we may have to shift our timelines because we have these extra challenges, but we're still going to be accountable. We have an associate whose company um, realized that they weren't going to be able to work at home. Many of their frontline folks didn't have reliable internet, so they mm -hmm. have sent everyone hotspots. 
mm-hmm. as a perfect mm-hmm. example. Um, another uh, associate was working in her closet because her husband was taking care of the kids and all the kids were home and the dogs and, and she was on, had her laptop on her um, laundry basket and they found out about it and shipped her a desk that would fit. It's still, you know, a desk in the closet, (laughs) but it was at least a desk. Um, So I think what you're sharing is that piece about a healthy work environment isn't just about demanding the employee resolve it, although that's a piece of it. It's Mm -hmm. also about, okay, wait, if we really want to be stable here and we don't know how long we're going to be in lockdown, right? What can we do? If this was our forever situation, what would we do about it? And then- That's exactly right. No, I agree. That's exactly right. And that, that's really the most important thing about remembering accountability and how we can support our, our teams while they're out there and maintaining that healthy environment because the, the challenges are real and we don't want to overlook that or make light of that. So keep that in mind. Any other questions that are maybe coming in from our, our chat, Anissa, before I go on to our- I would love to invite folks that are on the call um, to, to send us your questions as well. I do have um, uh, another question, but I'm going to hold it because I think you're going to get to this in, in your next point. Yes. Let's talk a little bit about, and I think this is really important for many of us, we've been facilitating virtual meetings for a while. You know, whether you were in this situation or not, many of our teams aren't co-located. They're in different countries even. And so we've, we have had some opportunity to do this. Some have not. And that's why I wanted to include it for both audiences, because the truth of the matter is, even for those of us who've been doing this virtual meeting for a while, there are still some times when I can't believe how uh, crazy it can get on a virtual call or a virtual um, conference um, that is even visual. And so I thought, let's revisit this to make sure we, we take advantage of the opportunity to get better at these skills. Um, we can simulate a face-to-face environment if we follow some good meeting protocols. And what do we mean by that? Well, identifying why we're meeting, what is our objective? And that is gonna be important in virtual settings because again, when you're in the middle of unprecedented times, time is important. And so you wanna make sure you're not just meeting to be meeting and you wanna make sure that people know why they're coming together. Um, Setting the meeting duration and the frequency is important, whether that's, hey, we're gonna be meeting every Monday for 15 minutes just to do a check-in with everybody. Uh, So we know everybody's on the same page. It's only gonna be 15 minutes and it's kind of like our Monday morning quarterback session. That's one thing. Or once a month, uh, which I, again, don't recommend during this time, but whatever that time uh, meeting duration is, making sure that you state it and keep to it. Um, Establishing your agenda. Um, A lot of times we have gotten away from doing that. And agendas don't have to be complicated. It can be here, three key bullets that we want to make sure we cover and talk about. Uh, And they can even be included in your invites so that everybody knows what the agenda is and they can come prepared. And then having some meeting ground rules. And what do we mean by ground rules? Simple things like don't place our call on hold because you have music and it'll interfere with the whole meeting if you do it. That's a simple one that was happening years ago and still happens to this day. So making sure people know to use their mute lines if they have to (laughs) go into another room or something like that. Okay, I gotta tell you, have y'all seen that? It's a video and it was there in a group conference and the woman mm-hmm. put her phone down, think it was off and then went to the restroom. And so it's <laughs> on the counter and all of her peers are, you know, going, stop, stop. She came for a thing. So, yeah. I had not heard that one, but oh my gosh, that would be horrifying. All times on many levels. I mean, how do you, how do you ever live that down? I don't know. I don't know. I'd have to quit the job and go start (laughs) someplace. But that's that's an example. uh, Announcing who's speaking uh, for those that are calling in, even to a video conference, because sometimes you've given them the option to call in if they can't join the video, and then everybody's talking because they can see each other, but your call-in people can't. So making sure that people know, hey, that they're supposed to say, "This is Jeff, and I wanted to say," or "This is Jane, and I wanted to," you know, say. Um, you, using the chat feature um, to avoid talking over each other can be a ground rule or using your raise your hand emoji um, so that the host can acknowledge someone so that they're not talking over each other. Those are, those are all the types of ground rules that you can set up either in your invite or at the beginning of each meeting just to remind people this is how we're going to engage with each other. So think about that 
And, and really the, the key difference in terms of how you wanna run your virtual meeting has a lot to do with making sure that you understand your technology. Um, you know, it's one thing to have a conference call, but it's another thing to have a Zoom or a Skype or a WebEx. So understanding the technology and then making sure that people uh, understand how they're going to access your meeting and request that they join your meeting in advance. I know even for this uh, webinar today, Anissa said, hey, get on the call at least 10 minutes in advance so we can work through any technical things that might come up or make sure that you have the right connectivity. And I think the same is important uh, as well when you're doing your virtual meeting. And then just some other considerations that you wanna think about that are gonna be different virtually than they would be if you were co-located. And that is, you know, we can come into a meeting and we can come in last minute when it's face-to-face -face and pass out stuff and say, hey, I didn't get to send this and, and move on from there. But the truth of the matter, in virtual meetings, there, there really needs to be more preparation than that. Sometimes there's pre-work and you wanna get that out in advance. Um, sometimes there is a PowerPoint presentation and you wanna make sure everybody has it. So even though it might be a video call where everybody should be able to see your um, presentation, for example, always think ahead, what would happen if they couldn't? Are, what if there are going to be some call-ins? Then get your presentation to them in advance, maybe the day before, a couple of hours before, whatever, so that they can be viewing whatever it is that you're going to be discussing in your meetings. And if you've got file sharing, uh, viewing capabilities, that's great. Just make sure everybody has access to that so that they're not lost. So that's one thing you want to consider. Um, the other is having the ability to capture information. If you've got a whiteboard on your uh, video conferences, that's great. Uh, but again, you wanna make sure that you have the technological capability for your whole team to see that and participate in some way. And then ultimately, encouraging participation is a little different when you're virtual than when you're face-to-face. -face. Um, a lot of times it means adding a feature in, such as, okay, everybody, let's just go around the table, so to speak, and I'll give everybody a chance to, you know, talk about what you're concerned about or ask any questions that you have. And then you really just go in and call them out. Hey, Joe, what do you think? Or Amy, what would you like to say? Or what questions do you have? So you have to be more intentional about getting people to participate. Or you'll tell them, hey, you can write it in the chat feature and we'll, we can discuss it from there. I would also encourage you to um, let them know what might be some things you want them to be discussing prior to the meeting, just because you have some people who process first and then talk, and you have other people that process and talk simultaneously. So you don't want to lose the opportunity to get really great information from those of your team that really need time to process their thinking first before they can really get into participating in the discussion. And that may be a, a good reason why you might want to send out some of those things in advance so that they're already thinking about that. So those are some of the things that you'll want to consider. Um, the other being, the contact information, a lot of times things go wrong on calls or video conferences, and you want to have a way in which they can reach out to you and or you can reach out to them. And so giving them your contact information that's like your, you know, your mobile number where they could text you and say, hey, I'm having problems getting on this call. Or where you can text them and say, hey, I thought you were coming on the call, but we don't see you yet. Is anything wrong? So having that nearby and making sure they have that nearby so you can engage if there is a technological problem is helpful. And then finally, just be aware of time. Uh, if you said this meeting starts at three, start at three, and if it's supposed to end at four, end at four. Um, that's one of my personal pet peeves is when people say they're going to start a meeting and then they don't, or when they say they're going to end it and they don't, because that inevitably infringes on something else that your team may have going on or members of your meeting may have going on. So be respectful in that way. So all of those are just some general things to consider when you are holding your uh, virtual meetings, or even if you were holding face-to-face -face meetings when we get back to business as usual, which I don't think we're gonna have business as usual. Um, I think it's always gonna be a little unusual for a while. Um, that's some things to just consider. So I'm gonna stop because I know that um, we are gonna be running out of time soon and I wanna make sure I have a chance to answer any questions that you might have and uh, make sure that we cover things that you might be interested in before we end today. So Anisa. Thank you. Yeah, so uh, I wanna read um, what Karen has written. Thank you, Karen. Great recommendations. I find myself challenged with not getting distracted with my own image while using live cameras and avo avoiding multitasking. Boy, can I understand. Hey, watch this. Hang on, stop the video. You have no idea what I'm doing now. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> so, 
So how, how do you get over the squirrels, the distractions, the non-multitasking? Oh, that's so good. Um, well, a lot of times, uh, quite frankly, I, I very seldom have my video on where I can be seen or, uh, or where I can see myself. And part of the reasons for that is I don't want to comb my hair. But uh, anyway, <laughs> I think that, that if you're hosting the meeting, it's a lot easier to do than if you're not hosting the meeting. And, and usually what I would suggest is that you, you have to be intentional about that too and saying, okay, I'm going to focus and I'm going to be prepared to engage in this meeting. In other words, being present, as we like to say, being present because it, it's really important when you are in a virtual setting that you are present or you will miss something. You can't read the mood of your team and your team can't always um, uh, let you know how they're feeling if you're not being intentional about it in the first place. Um, so I would encourage you to get the discipline around thinking upfront, okay, how am I choosing to be for this meeting? And I know that sounds like a very simple thing, but it really is that simple. You're making that decision. How am I choosing to be for this meeting? I'm choosing to be focused, present, and available to my team. Great question. That's very good. Um, I have another question and it's about what do you do when you're the manager and you see that some folks are getting their work done and, and the truth is, is that all of us are going to be distracted right now. We are worried about our, our loved ones. I haven't seen my mama mm -hmm. in three weeks and she's just beside herself not having her family around and her grandbabies. So um, I'm distracted. But, right. you know, how does a manager manage this situation remotely when, when people are not able, they don't necessarily have the capabilities and the competencies to manage their time when they're in person working together, let alone with all the distractions? How might a manager approach that performance conversation? Well, it, yes, if, it, if that's, a, that's a really a great question, because if there, if there is a... a um, one thing I've learned about working virtual, the people that you have on your team become even more important. Uh, and a lot of times if we've chosen a virtual environment, we normally will try to choose people that work well in that environment. But we're in a situation now where you may have people on your team that, wow, they would, this would not be ideal for them under any circumstances. So you've got to manage through that a little bit differently. And one way in which you can manage through that is maybe you have to have more of a check-in with them that really talks about what they've accomplished. And then they know that that's coming. So if you say, okay, you know, you've got these things I'd really need for you to get done. Let's connect by the end of the week and let's talk about what you've accomplished so far. Or let's make sure that by the end of the week, you have these things done out and we'll talk with each other then. In other words, you start setting some boundaries for them or helping them to set boundaries. And they know that there's going to be some accountability there. And then that, of course, will help them to get focused because it may be that they don't, it's not that they don't want to be, but they just don't know how to be. And in a sense, you're helping with that by creating that accountability. Yeah. Yeah. That which gets measured gets managed, right? That's exactly right. And so that's why we want to, you know, as I said in the beginning, we, we certainly want to be cognizant of the fact that there are distractions there, but there is a difference between there being distractions and somebody just really struggling with how do I even, how do I even stay focused even on a good day? and needing maybe our help around that. And, and I think as, as their manager, you're doing them a favor to really help them engage in that way. And you may even give them some tips that have been helpful for you. If you see them struggling, be transparent and say, I, I see that you're struggling with this. Let me give you some suggestions that have worked for me and they might be helpful to you. And I think that can be um, very, very helpful to your team member who may be afraid to say to you, I don't know quite how to <laughs> work in this unstructured way. Yes. Um, you know, I was talking to a client, ooh, yes, just the other day, and, and big company works in an office usually, it's first time working from home. And here were some things that I gave them, it's just pointers. And you might think, again, this is simple in terms of getting organized. And I said, first thing, get out of your bed. Do not <laughs> try to work from your bed. That will not work. It, it gets you in a whole mindset or your head space is you're still lounging around. Get up, put on some clothes, no PJs. And I recognize that you can still wear your fluffy slippers. But even if you're just, again, just wearing your, you know, workout clothes or something that gets you in the mindset of I'm now at work, then do that. Set your hours. 
Okay, if you if you know you need to be working from you know eight to whatever, set it. And I mean this: do not start doing laundry, do not start cooking dinner, do not start doing all those things. You are technically now working. Now keep in mind that if you're in a situation where you have kids and all that, you may have to again build in some breaks around that. But you should tell even your family, hey, I'm going to be working for the next two hours. Please don't interrupt me unless somebody's like sick. And 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 then really mean that and go in your office. You're whatever that office is, and that might mean I don't have an office per se, a home office. Well, if you have the corner of your table, wherever that space is dedic dedicated, use that space, use those two hours, do your work, and then take your break and then come back at it. These are the kinds of things that, again, those of us that have been working virtually for years have had to learn from our own you know, experiences of not doing it this way and finding out how distracted you can get even under, under normal circumstances. And so now it's even more important that you create some rigor around your work day so that you stay focused. Um, I wanna mention a, maybe a, a couple of tips around technology. Mm -hmm. um, I think that there are some individual contributor roles where the managers typically have more hands-on what are you working on now? What's next in this process? And and I, let me help you get it done, right? And and Jessa mentioned this earlier. She's used to more hands-on, you know, and in the field. And right, right. Um, I'm going to mention some technology that I wouldn't recommend out of the gate because you don't know for sure that your folks aren't going to be able to do it without constantly being on top of them or micromanaging, right? right. But there are are some really great technological solutions for making sure that your remote team, if you're concerned about it, is actually getting the job done. Mm -hmm. um, Time Doctor is one of them. We work with a lot of folks um, in the Philippines, India, Hungary, Romania, all different places. And because our team is so dispersed, there are situations where someone can say, I worked all day. And I say, oh, really, where's the results? Oh, it's all that stuff. And then, of course, you know, really, oh, all right, stuff. <laughs> uh -huh. um, so Time Doctor, especially if someone, if you're concerned about them, um, mm -hmm. is a really great way because it, if, if, they are if they are computer workers and they, you yes. know, the work they're going to get done is on the computer, then Time mm -hmm. Doctor allows you to, to know when they're on and when they're not. And that's why I'm cautioning about using it just with everyone. I don't think that's appropriate in this moment. This is a, a, a moment in time where building trust, not destroying it, is essential. That's exactly right. And, and I, I, I agree with you, Anissa. It, it's, it's an excellent opportunity for situational leadership. Um, there are going to be people on your team who really need you to get engaged and help them through some things. There are going to be other people on your team. They don't. I mean, they got this thing nailed down. Um, so you've got to consider the competence of your team members, how, how experienced are they, and how motivated are they in, in this process, and, and manage it situationally. Those that need more from you, you want to make sure you're available for that, but those who may not need as much of your time, then certainly, you know, let them have wings to fly, but managing situationally becomes really, really important. That's, and that is um, a perfect example of uh, what I believe to be a really effective mindset around managing remote workers and that is um, focus on the outcomes not the time that's right absolutely um, results are important and a lot of times if again if you're a manager who struggles with you know wanting to feel like you're in control then stay focused on what are the results that people are getting not necessarily how they're doing how they're doing it because nobody's going to do it the way you would do it anyway um, yeah. But how, you know, what are they, <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> I, just, I just learned that yesterday, no. <laughs> but yeah, what, what are they achieving? If they're achieving results and it's appropriate, bravo. Uh, I have learned in all of my years of management that there are people that have been on my teams who are so much smarter than me and I'm so thankful. I try to surround myself with a lot of smart folk because they can come up with some ideas I wouldn't even thought about and I'm glad that they did. And so keep that in mind. And then you're going to have those that are very junior or don't know as much and they're going to need ideas from you and, and your help. And so again, you want to make sure you're leading according to what's needed, not necessarily just sticking to one style. Beautiful. Um, something else that we might spend a moment on, I'm seeing um, an opportunity. I, we work with a number of, for example, manufacturing clients um, mm -hmm. who are not 
used to remote. Not only that, they're also not used to using technology in, in their communication efforts, even when they're on site. They've got oh, old, yeah. outdated, you know, bulletin boards and, and, and systems that mm -hmm. cause them to not know who's the best person to go to for this knowledge. And then I, we've got clients who only one person in a you know 2,000 uh, employee unit has all the knowledge, right, in a particular mm -hmm. area. This is an opportunity to look at those, op those weaknesses of yes. not using technology and to set up a Slack channel where people can freely access the people with the knowledge, to mm -hmm. set up a SharePoint or a Microsoft Teams or a methodology to more um, to to get with the the technological times. So, mm -hmm. well, you know, it's interesting you say that because there's nothing like a bit of a crisis that causes us to recognize what our gaps might be. And so, you know, if you find yourself out in that situation where you're like, "Oh my gosh, I didn't realize how far behind we were in all this," well, don't panic and try to do everything overnight. But take note of those things that are, are really areas of focus. It may be that you can't focus as much on it right now. There may be a few things that you can add or try. But clearly, when things start getting more normalized, you can tackle that as being a possible area of focus that you need so that in the future, you won't find yourself there. So I think that's a, a really important opportunity now to kind of see where are the gaps in our ability to uh, work in ways that are unusual for us that we may need to to use again. Yeah, very good. Um, another uh, question I have for you is about the communication adaptability. Mm -hmm. I know that um, we have managers who are definitely not used to communicating uh, frequently or um, in a virtual setting uh, and and this setting really is throwing them off. What tips do you have around making sure that that communication is timely and frequent or not, depending on you know, that situation? Well, you know, one of the things that I, I tell, you know, leaders all the time, especially when there's a big time of change, and this is a big time of change, um, is that communicating and over communicating becomes even more important because in the absence of information, people have a tendency to make up what they think is going on. Uh, and because they, you know, in some cases they don't see you right now and they're not seeing their colleagues and they're kind of in the dark in many cases of what, what's going on, what's happening with the company, how is it impacting us, what are we going to do next? And so they'll just start making it up and talking to each other and, and, it, and it's very possible this is not the right information. So, so as a leader, think about ways in which you can fill in that gap. And even sometimes when you don't know the answer, being very frequent in your communication and saying, I don't have any new information, there's no new news, we're still you know, on course to do this, um, that's important for them to hear from you. And again, that, you know, that could be daily right now while we're kind of going through this particular emergency. Then it might, you know, as you see people kind of calming down and getting kind of more focused, you might decide, okay, daily is too much. Uh, maybe I only need to do something, you know, weekly. But the only way you're gonna know that is to test it out. And I would try with more communication rather than less, especially now. Especially now. You know, I, uh, some time ago, February of this year, I read a report, and I know it was February because I used it in, in one of our strategic planning um, events, but I read a report that shows the number of, that, that determined how many times does a person have to hear something now before it sinks in. Um, and all of us have heard the report of that, the research about that some time ago. How, so how many times would you say, Mary, how many times does a person have to hear something before they remember it? I'm going to guess five. Yeah, so it used to be that a person would have to see your message somewhere between five and 10 times. I think the number officially was seven. Okay. You want to guess what that number is now in this day of massive data, always 24 seven Netflix, Instagram. Oh my messages. goodness. Oh my goodness. Instagram. I'm assuming the number has gone up. Is that what you're telling me? <laughs> yeah, just a little. Take a wild guess. And, okay, and like, if you're okay. on a call, you tell me. So Sheila's huh? guessing, I'm, uh, we've got folks that are guessing. Sheila's guessing 12. Okay, <laughs> that sounds good. What else? Right? Who else has got a guess? Oh, Jessa says 30. Lil says Ooh. 20. 
Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Paige says 50. It probably is for you, my dear Paige. She's on my team. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, so what's the highest high number so far? The highest guess? The highest guess is 50. Then we've got 20 and we've got 30. Then y'all ready for this? What? The number is 27 times. Really? 27 times. And so that means that a marketing message has to be in front of us 27 times. But that also means my teenager has to hear no 27 times. <laughs> <laughs> or more, or more. But I think that the, you know, the reason that it, we're bringing that up is because your point about over communicating, many mm -hmm. of us, myself, including as a, as a manager, I may say something two or three times and think, oh, I've, I've dealt with that. I've said that. How, right. do you, how could you not know how valuable you are to me? I told you last year. Right. <laughs> that's <okay. laughs> no, that's exactly right. And, and, you know, people will hear things differently than what we even meant. Yes. So not only are we communicating and what I mean, communicating, not just us talking, but also making sure we're listening well, uh, because quite often as we listen and ask clarifying questions, we'll find out that what we thought we said wasn't taken in the same way. In other words, our intent is one thing, but our impact is completely different. And so you want to you know, get behind what was the impact of what you said, oh not just your own intent. Thank you. Thank you for that. It reminded me of, uh, of one of the sitcoms where I can't remember which one it was off the moment, but that there's a person in the sitcom and all they're doing is talking and talking and they're saying the same thing. We mm -hmm. don't want to be that manager. It is important that we listen, read the audience. Or is my message get coming across? How are they perceiving it? And is my intent uh, being translated appropriately? Yeah, and, and that's what that's you know a kind of a final thought on communication because it's so important. Is is there's a concept known as the distortion curve in communication, and and all that simply means is I can have an intent, but my impact could be different because of the curve. And what's in that curve? Uh, is nonverbals. And what's problematic about that in a virtual setting is a lot of times we can't see the nonverbals. In other words, normally if you could see someone, you could see that their face was scowled and you would know they either don't agree or they didn't understand. But in a virtual setting, you can't often see that. And so even though you're communicating maybe very, very well, they may be sitting there scowling. And again, you've got to, to um, start asking those clarifying questions to make sure people are getting what you're trying to send out in terms of your message because you're missing a core part of communication and that is that 75 percent of communication is nonverbal. 75 percent i'm gonna write that number down too yeah so that means that you're missing you know a big part of the the, the communication process virtually because you can't always see those things and they inform how people are perceiving your message. So I, I would encourage you to really think about not just the words that you say, um, but think about you know, how are they being received from others and are there some cues that you aren't able to have virtually that now you have to be intentional about going out and getting. Yeah. Yes. Ah, beautiful final thoughts, Mary. I, that's why you're the expert. Tell us about your offer that you've uh, put together for our Leading in a Crisis Summit. Yeah, so there's a special offer just for you all for listening today. And I'm, I'm le leaving this out there until April 30th, but 20% off of our three-month virtual coaching program. You know, leaders uh, all over the world are using coaches to help them during this time and just in regular times in, in leading more effectively. And so I, I'm going to encourage you to really think about, you know, investing in your own professional development. Um, this program is for any leader that's intentional about leading well. If you want to gain new perspectives, enhance your leadership capabilities and positively impact not only your own growth and development, but the growth and development of your team, let me encourage you to invest in coaching. It will significantly impact how you lead. You can reach out to me through uh, Mary underscore Banks at wildconsultinggroup.com. And just don't forget to enter three month BCP in the subject line. And I'll be glad to send you more details about this program. But 20% off, you can't beat that. Excellent.
Excellent, excellent, excellent. Um, and for Turnkey Coaching Solutions, uh, and there's how to get a hold of Mary, Mary underscore Banks at wowconsultinggroup.com and write her phone number down, 281-537-5959. Um, and one of the things that my team and I have put together, um, we couldn't do free because everybody knows free has no value, but what we could do was the next best thing. Um, unfortunately, we do know that many of our clients and many of our peers are in the throes of furloughs and layoffs and it breaks our heart. Um, but there are some things that we can do to help and there are things that you as an organization can do to set your organization up. Um, for health once all of this is is over. One of those things is outplacement coaching for those who you have to let go of. Um, sometimes that can be very cost prohibitive. So we've put together a high touch, high tech, hybrid digital and personal coaching packages. Um, it's a very streamlined program, also extremely effective and affordable because it is name your own price. So when I said we are here to help our clients and we're all in, this is what I meant. Um, and on the other side, the other track is about retained leaders and powers. It's also a digital package combined with a few in one-on-one uh, -on -one sessions, uh, sorry, group sessions in order to have that personal process. So um, reach out to me, leader at turnkeycoachingsolutions.com, myself or one of my team members will be in touch about it. And um, do let us know how we can support you. Give us some feedback about the other sessions that you might want to see in our virtual Leading in a Crisis Summit. And Mary, thank you again. This was really fantastic. I had a lot of fun today. Thank you. I appreciate having the opportunity to share with uh, all of you. And I hope you guys take care of yourself, stay safe, and um, stay at home. Yeah, stay home, stay safe, stay healthy. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Mary. Thanks, Anissa. Have a great day. Yeah.